So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for uh, joining in. Uh, this is uh, the fourth webinar that uh, Coach Compass uh, is bringing to you. And you know, every time um, you know I do this introduction, I, I feel a little tensed. You know, so many people looking at me, I'm not able to see them. You know, it's a very weird place. But still, you know, I have to do that. I know. So uh, you know, this is the fourth webinar. This is um, we first started uh, with the speaker from US. Uh, then you know two speakers from UK and then now Mete we have come to the other part of the geography Mete is based out of uh, Singapore and the intention with which we bring the webinars to you uh, is to bring to you that what's happening in coaching across the world and what are the best practices and what's happening in the area of leadership and we also want you to interact with leading coaches and also a platform uh, to discuss uh, and exchange coaching ideas and this time uh, our speaker is uh, Mete Johansson. Uh, welcome Mete, thanks for uh, you know doing this webinar. Uh, while before I give it to Mete you know let me give you a small introduction. It's actually difficult to give a small introduction of Mete you know. So Mete uh, is a triple author, keynote speaker and entrepreneur. I I'm actually looking at the note you know it's such a uh, you know, uh, interesting introduction. So she worked in leadership roles for multinational corporations across the globe for 15 years uh, before uh, founding Betamind Training. It's a training consultancy headquartered in Singapore that provides highly customized learning and coaching programs. Mm, now, why Mete? You know, why we thought of Mete and you know how we connected. Mete has internationally presented a signature keynote on how to become an authentic leader, which, you know, while there are many names about leadership, but authentic leadership is something, uh, you know, we connect well with. And the leader who, uh, the leader who we follow, not because of their position, uh, wealth or title, but because we are inspired to follow them. And Mete is a recipient of the Asian uh, Women Icon Award. And Mete is the founder, chair, and relentless driver of Keynote, which is world's leading non-profit online directory of female speakers. She's on a mission to bring diversity to speaking stages around the world. Uh, and Mete, we just want to tell you, uh, this is the fourth one for Coach Compass, and out of them, three were women. So we wow. are in sync and online, okay? <laughs> And uh, Mete is born in Denmark. Uh, she has lived in 11 countries and today uh, she calls Singapore as home. Uh, so before I hand it over to Mete, a uh, few requests. Uh, we request you to be on mute. Uh, whatever questions you have, you can type it uh, in the message box and I will be keenly following the message box. Uh, Mete is going to speak for around 40 minutes uh, first and then we will be taking your questions. And then, you know, we'll see whether we can summarize and all that. Uh, I hope it uh, works fine with all of you. Um, yep. okay, I will be also in mute and I will also switching off. I will also be switching off my video so that everybody can see you. Uh, here you go. All the best. Thank you very much. There you go. I hope you can all see my screen now so that we have the same picture in front of us. Yeah. Thank you so much for that introduction. Before we dive into the topic, I would love to share with you how I came to the topic of authentic leadership. And in fact, six years ago, I was working for a multinational company in a position that just didn't feel like me at all. I would go to the office and sometimes sit there staring at my computer with tears in my eyes. I would wake up in the morning, look at the ceiling thinking, oh God, it's a work day. I've got to go to work, drag myself there. The days felt long. In the evening, I came home and it felt like somebody had just pulled out the plug and I was some kind of electrical equipment that was off. And I knew it was not sustainable. I was just so not motivated. It was very ironic because I had studied motivation or engagement since I did my MBA thesis on the topic 20 years before that. And there I was not being motivated. Previously, people had described me as being someone who's full of bubbly energy. 
I just felt bad because that was not me at the time. Um, and what kind of role model was I to my team? I took the right consequences for me, which was to quit. Now, and that is not what I'm recommending other people to do. On the contrary, I continue to study motivation, engagement, and um, I came across authentic leadership. And I see that that is a solution for a lot of leaders who are in the same situation as I was that day. So I would like to share some tips and technologies or uh, tips and tricks with you today, but um, it's not about quitting. It's rather about finding your authentic way, unmasking the leader that's within you and inspire with authenticity and purpose. Now, the numbers show that I was definitely not alone in being not engaged. Worldwide engagement, as Gallup's report shows, are very, very low. The numbers are 66% of people who are not engaged and only 34% are engaged at the workplace. So there's a lot of people who feel the same as I did. I cannot say do because today it has definitely changed. I have found my energy, I have found my way. When we talk about authentic leadership though, it's very important that we first take a moment to realize what is authenticity? Because authenticity is on every executive coach's lips. Everybody talk about, oh, you must be authentic, be your authentic self. But what does it mean to be authentic? Being genuine, being real, being you? But what part of you? If we take the picture that you hopefully all see on the screen right now, there's a professional woman on the picture. She's also a parent, it seems like. So if she wants to be authentic, just a little thought experiment. Does she need to bring her whole self to work, as some people say? Is it important in order to be authentic to demonstrate all your roles at the same time? Before I suggest an answer to it, I'd like to give you a second example. And this is about your emotions. What about your emotions? Like this guy who obviously is angry. Is it, in order to be authentic, must you show your emotions? Is that what makes you authentic? The third example, what about your personality? Now, this is a picture of someone like we typically describe somebody who is an introvert. You may have taken the Myers-Briggs personality type indicator test, which says whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. So if you're an introvert, in order to be authentic, must you stay true to that part of your personality? Three different case studies, little examples. Is authenticity staying true to your roles, your feelings and personality. If you're a bit in doubt right now, I'm not surprised because even the self-proclaimed gurus in the field, they very often disagree about what, what authenticity is. In fact, it's a shame there's a little bit of a discussion lacking on what is authenticity. Let me describe the first one and I will be a little bit provocative here. So I'm also a working professional. I'm also a parent. And um, let me add a third dimension to it. I'm also a wine lover. So tomorrow I have a wine tasting and I look very much forward to it. Now, if I add that third dimension to it of being a wine lover, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is awkward. Why is she as a professional woman uh, sharing this with me? It's not relevant right now. Exactly, it's not relevant right now. We don't have to share the parts of us that are not relevant in the situation. And especially to uh, professional women who are on the call, we very often tend to immediately say, oh, we have to bring ourselves a whole self to work. So we need to show that we are mothers at the same time. And I don't see that because that's not what makes you authentic. It's not relevant whether you're a parent at work or not. So why is that the first thing that you share that I'm a mother of two or three or whatever it is? Just like I don't have a bottle of Chardonnay or a picture of a Chablis, uh, um, my favorite Chablis, uh, standing on my desk at work, I don't need to have the demonstration of being a parent. I know it's a bit provocative and I'm not saying that we must hide our family, we, mu we must hide our beloved children. That's not it at all. What I'm saying is it's not needed in order to be authentic, to bring your, all your roles to work. 
with the feelings, with showing emotions. I like to repeat a little story that happened to me with my coachy Jack. He was obviously a bit agitated and said, Meta, you're always about this authenticity and being yourself. I was angry and I showed it, okay, because my team messed up. And I asked him, um, what role did respect play here? And he looked at me a little bit funnily because he remembered that the last time he had spoken about respect and he didn't really answer immediately. So I said, how do you think that your team felt when you had this out outburst of anger? And that's when Jack got it, that he had told me that respect is very important to him. But by, show, by having an emotional outburst, he was not really showing respect to his team. So he was somehow not being authentic, although he had showed his emotions. So showing your emotions, especially the negative ones, is not really necessary in order to be authentic. The last one, with personality. So if you have done the personality test from Myers-Briggs, you will see that even if you scored as an, an introvert, you will typically have scored 70% introversion and then 30% of extroversion. That means that you don't have to lock yourself into a room just because you score as an introvert. You still have the 30% of extroversion to play on. That's also part of your authentic you. It doesn't make you inauthentic to go on stage and address your team in a town hall meeting, although you are an introvert. It's playing on that 30% or whatever it is for you, that part of you that has extroversion. So if these things are not really necessary in order to be authentic, what is key to authenticity? I have the answer for you. It is about your core values. Your core values are the concepts and principles that are of fundamental importance to you that you don't like to compromise on. In one workshop once, I asked participants to define core values and one participant, she put it beautifully. She said, core values to me is, when you take away my labels, you take away the label of, I'm a lawyer, I'm an MBA, working professional, mother, daughter, sister, friend, wife, you take away all those labels. What's left with me are my core values. Think about it for a moment. What is left with you when you take away your titles, your hierarchical titles, the companies you work for? That are your, those are your core values, what's left afterwards. When I ask in live coaching sessions or uh, my keynote talks, who has their core values defined? In fact, not, not so many hands go up. It's quite astonishing how few hands go up when core values is what makes you authentic, but people are still not so much aware of what are their core values. We're surrounded by a lot of different value systems. One of them is the spiritual, your religion or belief that tells you how to behave in a certain way. Another one is country values. For instance, in Asia, values around collectivism are much more important than in the West, in Anglo-Saxon countries, it's a lot about individualism. So around, in different countries, different cultures, also values differ. We've got our family values as well. And they actually dif differ quite a bit from when we grew up ourselves in our families to when we establish our own families later on. We may cre create a different value system. And the last one is the one that I have a little bit of an ambiguous <laughs> relationship with. I work quite a bit with uh, corporate values. What happens every once in a while is what also happened when I spoke to Jonathan. Not his real name, of course. I spoke to Jonathan. It was a potential client I wanted to pitch for the business because I had seen the mission, the vision, the values on the website, and I was impressed by it. So I told Jonathan, this is absolutely fantastic. I was inspired by it. You know what his answer was? Ah, that's just the marketing department that created that. Internally, it doesn't mean a thing. So unfortunately, corporate values are very often just a set of words, like the set of words that I'm showing right now. This is an, actually, an actual set of values of an actual company 
in the US that doesn't exist anymore. I'm starting to give you some hints of who it could be. This is a picture of their headquarters. They had respect, integrity, communication, and excellence as their core values. Now, they went bust in the beginning of the millennial, and they took down a big accounting firm together with them. It used to be five accounting firms, five big firm ones. After that, it was only four because Arthur Anderson went down together with Enron, who had hidden massive losses in special purpose vehicles. Is that respect? Is that paying respect to your shareholders and your employees? Is that integrity? Is that transparent communication? Is that excellence to cheat? Definitely not. So very often, unfortunately, companies have these set of values that mean absolutely nothing. And it's a shame because there's so much potential in living values, whether it's your personal ones or the corporate ones. Now, your core values, some of you may already have defined core values. If you have already done some coaching, this is one thing that a lot of coaches will have a look at very quickly because your core values, since they are the principles, the, the concepts that are most important to you, it's also what causes self-actualization. You will be fulfilled if you live by your core values. Now, if you don't know exactly what your core values are, I'm going to do a little exercise that will show you this is one way of discovering your core values. Before that, let's have a look at what are my core values. So you get a little bit of a feeling for how does this work, the core values. A fundamental value for me is growth, personal growth, professional growth. It's one of the reasons why I was not very excited about my last corporate job and why I left the corporate world, because I didn't have that in my job. Another thing that I didn't have in my job was empowerment. I had gotten from being able to empower three different teams to being more distant from the responsibility of employee development. And all of a sudden I could not empower others. So to me, my personal growth and also empowering others to do and be the best they can, that is of fundamental importance to me. I didn't have that in my last job and that's why I just lost interest in that job. Another thing that's very important to me is respect. And I'm adding this slide because I want to also show you that it's about how you see respect. Respect is, for me, it's not so important whether you um, are following the traditions and the ceremonies in different countries as the picture of the monk on this picture. That's not the most important thing about respect to me. What, what, what I find is very important is that we respect each other's wants and needs, that we go out of our ways to respect wants and needs, that we get our own wants and needs fulfilled, and also that we go out of our ways to respect other people's wants and needs. Another value that I've put up here that's very important to me, and I'm sharing this because although I've worked on values for the past six years, this value, I only had the epiphany about it about a year ago. The way it came was simply from actually a coaching session where all of a sudden I realized that I was talking a lot about, I like to have variety in life, I like to do different things. And that's when I realized, yes, I'm doing some coaching after this webinar. Right now I'm doing a webinar. Next week I'm facilitating some groups of, of um, executives. I will uh, write a little bit on my book number four over the weekend. I need variety. I need to do loads of different things. So that's a little bit of a snapshot of how do values work for other people. I have put it into, I want to do and be the best I can. And I want to empower others also to do and be the best they can. That's how it works for me. And that's what energizes me every single day to get up in the morning and work with my clients. Let's do an exercise. And right now you see a black screen. If you're still looking at the screen in a minute, you will see words coming towards you. Now those words will be coming up quite fast, meaning, you don't have time to think about these in a very rational way. You need to switch on your intuition. 
when a word comes where you think, hmm, yeah, that, that sounds quite okay, that, that makes sense, then I want you to take note of it. If there's no emotional reaction, just let it go and let the next one make an impression on you. So all I want you to do is for the next minute, whilst we're going through this exercise, take notes of the words where you think, yes, this is important to me. This has some kind of positive intuitive reaction uh, or causes an intuitive reaction um, with me. So if you're ready, have a look at the words and take note of the ones that seem to be appealing to you. So to those of you who are wondering why there was a minute of quiet, if you were driving the car, it's because we were doing an exercise. We're back again with voice. If you've done the exercise, what I want you to do next is to tonight, think a little bit about how have you lived these during the day today? That's the first piece of homework. How did you live it today? The next piece of homework is to think about how can I live them tomorrow, on Monday, when I go back to the office next week? And the third piece of homework is, what do I need to do in order to be able to live these more consistently over time in future? So three pieces of homework, which are looking about past, future, and what can you change in order to live it better in future? Now, if you were uh, in your car, I do have a free values test online and these slides are also be, uh, going to be distributed if you want them. So you can still do the, the exercise later on. If you have already worked with coaches, I hope that you're taking this opportunity to simply reflect on, on it again, because maybe just like I, um, something may come up that you haven't thought about before. Let's go to the next slide. Authenticity is all about staying true to your values. And I hope you have a little bit of a snapshot of how you can become more aware of your own personal values. To those of you who are more rational, who, want, uh, who are not just easily persuaded with what I tell you, I want to share some numbers with you as well. In Edelman Trust Barometer, they do this study very regularly. They say that the general public wants to know our leader's personal value. In fact, it's 79% of people who agree to this, that they want to know leaders' personal values and it's important in building trust. And we know that business is all about trust. We buy brands because we trust the brands. Um, so it's a fundamental part of also running a business, uh, being in business in general, being a leader building trust and that is necessary today. Know your personal value, show them, live them on a daily basis. Another number to those of you who like numbers, CEO's credibility amongst the general public was 47% this year in the Edelman Trust Barometer, 47%. And the worst thing about this is that this is actually good news because the study before had a CEO credibility of only 37%. So it's gone up, but still we trust less than half of the population trusts CEOs. We need to do, do something about this as leaders. The antidote is being authentic as a leader. And now that you know how to discover your values and that this is the basis of authentic authenticity, you can also start becoming an authentic leader. 
I'm going to ask you five different questions. If you can answer these positively, you're ready to lead authentically. And if not, we may still have to scrutinize a little bit more on how to become an authentic leader. So the first one is, I'm passionate about my job. Can you say yes to I'm passionate about my job? What about the second one? My company's mission and purpose inspires me. Does it inspire you? If you want to lead authentically, this is important. My teams are inspired by my leadership. Are they? Or is it like when I left my corporate job because I was definitely not being very inspirational towards the end of my career simply because I was not in a good space myself? Do you have a life purpose? And at the end of the workday, do you still feel energetic? Those are some of the signs in order to, to check whether you're an authentic leader, whether you're leading authentically or not. And I will explain you why all these five different points are important in the rest of the time that we have together here. Values are important because they are our compass. Uh, keyword compass is important today. Values are our compass to guide us to take the right decision. Also, when we have difficult decisions to take, our values will guide us in the right direction. This is why values are important. Now, there's another thing about values, and that is that when we know our values, our purpose literally jumps out of the paper. The number of times that I have worked with clients and we've defined the values, it was so easy all of a sudden to see what is the purpose for this person. What happens when we live a purpose? That is when passion is ignited. And we know that when we follow our passion, when we live our passion every day, what happens? We have energy to do extraordinary things. Values and purpose is the direct trigger to release energy to do extraordinary things. We all know it, when we're passionate about things, we can do it all night, all day, we still feel excited about it the next day. I have experiences many times with, with coaches that I've worked with. One in particular I'd like to point out, we were doing group coaching and a, a senior leader, she started talking about sustainability. And all of a sudden, she got very, very excited about it. The rest of the team was asking, why did you never ever share this with us? We didn't know that you had such passion about it. She had simply not lived it. She, had not, she knew that she was passionate about it, but she'd never taken the time to truly live it at the company. Today, on top of her busy work schedule as uh, a senior executive, she's also initiating a project to make the products from this particular company a lot more sustainable. And she has the energy, the passion to do it on top of a busy executive life, simply because it's, it's her values, it's her purpose, and she is doing extraordinary things. Now, when you are living your purpose, when you are passionate about things, that is when you're inspired. And that is a prerequisite for inspiring others. We mentioned this at the beginning of the webinar. I talked about, uh, or I was introduced as talking about authentic leadership, and it's the leader who um, gets followers, not because of hierarchy, title, wealth, but because this person is inspiring others to follow them. Being inspired is key to being able to inspire others. I believe that when we think rationally about it, that's very clear, isn't it? Now, this actually also has dollar sense because one inspired person produces as much as 2.25 merely satisfied people. So the top person, when that merely satisfied person produces $1, you, when, you're, when you are inspired, you will produce $2.25. Now that's another very good reason to make sure that you and your teams are inspired. Making work meaningful is also something that is taking, uh, that is becoming more and more important all over the world. Now, I know that in certain parts of India, we have a lot of people calling in from India. In India, of course, there are certain people 
who are not so worried about making work meaningful yet. Um, when you are living in a, in a situation where you can barely afford rent or food, you're not looking at meaningful work. And that was the same for, for my parents, my grandparents. They were not looking for meaningful work. They were, making, they were making money so that they could pay the rent and feed the children. Now today, everybody on this call, I'm pretty sure that none of us are very worried about paying the rent. So those bottom hierarchies of Maslow's pyramid of needs, they're not relevant for us. What's relevant for us is to have meaning, to have the self-actualization. And that is again, again, about our values. So to those of you who want to have some, some data on why it's important to have meaningful work today, 23% of Americans, oh, sorry, 23% is the proportion of lifetime income that Americans will forego for work that is always meaningful. Isn't that amazing? Almost a quarter of our lifetime monies we are willing to give up to have a meaningful job. And 9,000 US dollars is the value that meaningful work generates per worker per year. Now this is of course a study in the US, that's where most of the management data comes from. Unfortunately, I wish that there was a lot more coming out of Asia as well. The numbers may be a bit different in this region, Still, you don't have to think very far to see that, uh, of course, this is also relevant in our parts of the world. And then finally, the last statistic, nine out of 10 people will trade future earnings for me meaningful work. Making work meaningful is very important. Meaningful is when there is purpose, when there is a purpose for the greater good as well. Now, unfortunately today, there's quite a few leaders who seem to, leave, to lead following the mantra, I want to lead for the purpose of a greater me. Uh, I am very sure that this is not very sustainable over time. There must be this something that makes this world a better place. There must be a purpose for the greater good in order for your leadership to be sustainable over time. Because we're not living on the bottom layers of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we are looking for fulfillment, we are looking for meaningful work, we want to do something in the purpose that meets a purpose for the greater good. Again, to those who prefer to have numbers rather than being persuaded by my words, Edelman Trust Barometer says that 76% of the population want CEOs to take a stand on challenging issues. We don't want leaders just to sit down and take the world as it comes, no. We want leaders also in business to take a stand, stand up and speak up. And if you look at PwC, a study that was done on what makes companies successful in 2030. Yes, there is the technology. And of course, you need to be flexible. There is the agility. And what they also very clearly stressed is that there must be purpose and you must be focusing on humans as well. I have shared a couple of missions from companies to share how are certain companies making or responding to a purpose for the greater good. You may already recognize which company I'm showing a mission for right now, simply from the layout. I have not revealed it yet. So this company says our mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Now, you may not necessarily be inspired by this, and that's absolutely okay. Unless you're working with Google. If you work for Google, then you better be inspired by it. The purpose with a mission statement is to make sure that you attract people who are excited about it. I'm not very excited about technology, so there's no way that people can get me excited about this. But for people who are excited about technology and who want to make information accessible and useful to the rest of the world, this is actually quite inspirational. Let's take another one. To be globally significant in each of our chosen businesses by 2025. The mission is to be the most reliable global network for customers and suppliers that delivers value through products and services, to be a responsible value creator for all our stakeholders. I hope that we don't have too many people from this company, 
because I am going to criticize this. I'm going to say that this is not inspirational at all. You cannot get your people to get up in the morning in order to be a responsible value creator for other people. What it's saying is you're getting up in the morning to make other people rich. Who's, who's inspired about that? It's not very inspirational, is it? So my excuse is, um, it, is a, um, it is a sign that it's a company that works in an environment where we're still looking to fulfill basic needs. Um, this is the company. So my excuses for criticizing the company, it's not the only one. There are plenty of companies out there who have this communication and they are getting away with it. What I will argue is that studies such like the PwC one that I showed you just now will mean that you will not get away with this in future. In any economy around the world, we need to find inspiration and we need to find a purpose for the greater good. People are not inspired about this. Another very quick example. In 2008, Airbnb exists or founded in 2008. Airbnb exists to create a world where anyone can belong anywhere providing healthy travel that is local, authentic, diverse, inclusive, and sustainable. Now, I'm inspired by this. I don't know about you. It's okay if you're inspired. It's okay if you're not inspired. I'm inspired by this, but not to the extent that I want to work there. I think this is great for my travel, my personal travel. So let's leave it at that. One that I do want to share with you, and again, if, if you're not inspired by this, it's okay because we want to attract people with similar value system to ourselves and our mission statement. Our, our communication of the purpose for a greater good gives us the opportunity to attract people who have the same values as us, who are, in, who, who are inspired and energized by the same um, mission and values as us. And that's when we together can do extraordinary things. That is when it's multiplied. My energy is multiplied by attracting other people who have a similar value system to myself. So this is about Keynote. Uh, I was introduced in the beginning as also having founded the world's leading directory of women speakers called Keynote. And we're on a mission to bring diversity to speaking stages around the world. And we will continue this until there's a good balance of 50-50 uh, women and men on stages. And if you're not inspired by it, it's fine. What I have as experience is whenever I show this slide, afterwards there's like this one or two people, one or two people will contact me and say, hey, this sounds exciting. Show me more, tell me more. That is what a mission statement does. We're bringing diversity to speaking stages because we know that diversity increases group intelligence and we all stand to benefit. So why choose authentic leadership? There are, in addition to what I've been sharing with you already today, I'd like to give you one more, one more reason. When we live our authentic selves, so based on our own values, this is when stories are created. Let me give you an example. Microsoft, for instance. Microsoft for a long time was steered by products and profitability. So Bill Gates and Steve Ballmers, they were very much focused on the product and the profit side of things. Now Satya Nadella is completely different. He's focusing on the people side of things and he shares his own personal story of his, this, his um, son with different abilities. How because he has a disabled son, he wants, he strongly believes in inclusion. And he works on inclusion and on truly respecting everybody, all people. When he shares his stories about his son with special needs, it becomes so authentic, it becomes so real. We all know that stories are persuasive, but if it's your own authentic story that makes it so real why you are focusing on people because you want to include everybody, regardless of their abilities, that's when stories become truly persuasive. And that is when you connect. Authentic stories are so much more persuasive. They will allow you to connect with your employees, with your staff, and with your clients and all other stakeholders. So summing up, unmasking the leader within. What is key to authenticity? That's what I started my webinar with. 
it's about your core values. Your core values are key to authenticity. And remember how you inspire others? It's about leading with the values, truly living it, truly communicate it on a daily, uh, daily basis. Leading with values and purpose inspires you and it inspires others. You need to be inspired to inspire others. And that is what true leadership is about. And finally, a purpose for the greater good makes it larger than yourself. When you dare to live your values, when you dare to be you, when you dare to embrace a vulnerability that goes along with living your authentic self, that is when amazing things happen. That is when your projects get a life on its own and take you to places that you've not even dreamt about before. I have a seven step framework to unmask the leader within, which is in the deck. I will leave it at this right now. It's in the deck so you can have a look at it afterwards and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you would like to know more about authenticity. I will publish uh, my next book on the topic of authenticity, so stay in touch with me and um, I'd be happy to share my book with it when it's ready in 2020. With that, I'll open the room for questions. Um, okay, I, I think, you know, it was uh, really nice and uh, while we were speaking, uh, there was um, some interesting uh, questions uh, came to everyone, some were directed to me. So that was quite interesting. So what I gather and, you know, I also wanted to share with you, you know, when you spoke about Microsoft and what Nadella did in last five years, uh, the earning got tripled, the share value got tripled in five years. You know, a few days back, we were having a speaking session. We had, in fact shared this example. And I think, you know, I just also thought uh, what I heard is, you know, authenticity can give us, uh, you know, come from core value, uh, which can create a great mission and which create very positive stories for us to, you know, take the organization ahead. That's what I heard in last uh, 40 minutes. And there are a few interesting questions. Uh, first question came, is that, uh, you know, the words that, uh, you know, came in the slide when you we were talking about core values, uh, while the words were very powerful, but the words can have different meaning to different people. And so the question was, you know, how do you handle that in a practical way? How do you handle in a practical way that uh, words have different meaning to different people? For your own personal values, it's less important as long as you know what it means to you. For corporate values, it is essential because if you talk about communication, for instance, which is one of the ones like entrepreneurship and communication and integrity, they are some of the very frequent values that are used by corporations, correct? When you have a word like that, it's very important that you define what you mean by it. Because communication may mean something completely different to you than it does to me. Yeah. And that is why uh, corporations on their websites will usually have the word and a description. And that's why it's so important also for the senior management to have good and frequent dialogue about what are these what do these values mean? How do we live them on a daily basis? So instead of saying communication is important to us, show it, live it, give an example, give some stories around it. Back to Satya Nadella. He says diversity is important. He talks about diversity. He lives it by also promoting people from minorities. That is what's important. If you believe in diversity, don't just put it as a word on the website spell out in words what it's what it means and then live the stories that are showing what you mean by diversity make sure you have the discussions in the top leadership as well of what do we actually mean by it how do we live it yeah i hope that I, answers yeah that question was raised by bimal and there's another interesting question that was raised by uh, shrish I, I think you know it was my question also is that when your uh, purpose and the org purpose, if there is a, you know, difference in what you do? Yeah, it's a, it's a question. It's one of the first questions I yeah, get every single time. Team, you know? uh, so it's, yeah. 
own value and organization value that's the question yeah no. it's a question i get very very often and when i do this work with large organizations where we look at well how can people live their own values at work and they are overlapping with the corporate values sometimes people ask me what if there's no overlap between your personal values like if you see a circle of your personal value a circle of corporate values what if there's no overlap if they're so far apart i have a very easy and tough true answer to that well then the person is wrong for that company hmm. <laughs> because you will not then you are with one of those 67 percent of the world's population who's not engaged at work and remember that a merely satisfied person produces one dollar when a, an inspired person produces 2.25 imagine what the ones who are not even merely satisfied are producing they're probably a loss to the company so it's 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 better to to realize okay we, we're not a good match so let's just part here why don't you do something where you can truly live your values where you can focus on, on what's important to you and develop your strength in that area in fact, uh, you know, it's a very interesting point. Hogan uses MBPI, which is their values tool, to talk about organizational, uh, you know, match. And then they get into, you know, HPI and HDS for their, uh, you know, strengths and in areas of improvements or uh, derailers. Very interesting point. Thanks, Mete. There's another interesting question here. And Shish, first of all, thanks for raising this question. Uh, Mete, thanks for answering. Uh, Jabba has an interesting question that how do you embrace diversity and people with different core values more easily and collaborate because there will be different people and with organizations as there is a strong challenge of working with people who has different viewpoints. So how do you yeah. address that? That is a, a typical diversity question. How do you manage diversity because people will have different viewpoints. Now studies show that diversity increases um, the uh, um, profits that come from innovation that is very clear now the the cases where diversity is not a huge advantage is if you have typical very strongly routine work where there's just one way of doing things um, almost like conveyor belt kind of work that's where diversity doesn't really have much of an added value uh, today, in, in today's knowledge economy, diversity does add value. And yes, it is a bit tough because you've got to go through that listening to all the diverse opinions. But if you're open to it, and this is where inclusivity is so important, that we really include everybody's opinion, that we create a culture of psychological safety where everybody feels safe to speak up. So it's it's the typical it's it's the yeah it's the basis for making diversity work that is being respectful of other people's opinions listening to them including them and that process can be a bit tough when you're not used to it yet after a while when you when you get more and more used to it and when you also are uh, open when you start being open towards listening to other people's opinions you will start to realize how, how fantastic it is to work with very different personalities. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a very, very, very interesting question. And um, there's a, a, a question coming in the similar line from Rajiv. In fact, he made a statement before. The statement was, you know, um, telling people about my values is also about being vulnerable. Uh, you know, that's a very important point. And what the question that he's raising right now that being authentic also has okay costs slash implications and how we prepare for the implication i think it's a vulnerability uh, okay about. would you like to address this i think it's a very important question maybe it is and it's also the last thing i said about uh it takes bravery you need to dare to embrace that vulnerability of especially if you are, and that's why i use the analogy of the mask in the presentation it is about taking off the mask if you have been used to wearing a mask your entire corporate life then yes it's it seems scary to take off that mask absolutely and it is about trying out small steps at the time and i'd also like to stress that it's not necessarily about 
showing lots of details from your private life. It's rather living the values. So for instance, um, I shared already that for me, it's about the growth and the empowerment of others. I live this as a mother. I live this as a wife. I live this as a friend. I live this in my professional life. Does that really make me very vulnerable? In fact, not really. You know, because it's, it's my values that I'm living. I'm supporting others. Um, I may sometimes be a little bit of a, a, a nuisance when I start coaching my friends during dinner conversations. But <laughs> <laughs> apart from that, um, it, it doesn't have to go to a very personal level. It's simply about growth and empowerment for me. So I do not need to share a lot of details from my, professional, from my personal life in my professional life. Yes, Satya Nadella does that by sharing, I have a disabled son. But honestly, that's about what he shares, right? Yes, he takes pictures, interviews in his private home. That's not the essential part. It's not about, it's nice. Yes, it's an added nice feature. The most important thing is that he shares that he has a disabled son share some stories around it, about the challenges around it, um, and that, um, what it means for him as a CEO. So those stories, they turn out to be beautiful. And yes, you need a little bit of courage to share that. I don't see it as a huge courage piece though. I'm not sure if you disagree with that. Yeah, so I think, you know, there is so, and I think Nidhi is also making a comment here, I see. Mm. So actually, there is no contradiction here. Uh, and and yes, uh, courage uh, is an important part of, you know, being present and, you know, bring my values because when my values are there, you know, I, I'm getting the best out of myself. And that's the only way to, uh, you know, contribute to the organization. Uh, and I'm also aware about uh, the time we have four minutes left. Um, and I see Mohandas writing that authenticity comes from conviction. Yes, Mohan, uh, we really yes. have your point here, which Mete also highlighted. And um, and I think he's also raising an interesting point that however many authentic leaders become dogmatic about their own values and want to push these are the organization's own. Imposing, <laughs> I think it, it directly contradicts diversity. You know, so what do you think, Mete, uh, about this? Do yeah, dogmatism is never good. Dogmatism is never good. And imposing your values on others, that is not good either. I believe that is one of the traps in leadership, that sometimes leadership goes to, to people's head. Um, and dogmatism is one of the natural reactions we have when uh, things go to get to our head, unfortunately. Um, Absolutely, it's not good to impose your own values. Uh, unfortunately, so many wars have been fought over people imposing their own values on other countries' values. That is not the right way of going about it. That is just not it. You can inspire others with your values. That is the way to do it. Become an inspirational leader, talk about what's important to you, and then people who have a similar value system will follow you. They will agree with you mm -hmm. on that part. And, and uh, you know, Mette, a very interesting point, uh, you know, is being written here by Bimal, a very interesting point. He said that while there's a cost probably, uh, there's a reward to which perhaps a lot bigger and outweigh the cost or implications. I think, you know, that sort of summarizes, you know, what you're trying to say. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, a very interesting point. Okay, we have three more minutes uh, in case you have any other question. Uh, you can raise it because you know, we also want to finish it on time. We value each of your time. So, uh, okay, we have, we started getting some interesting feedback. Uh, thanks, Rajiv, for your feedback. Um, Mete, any last remark from your side? I'll probably expand a little bit on the one with the overlapping values. If your personal and your corporate values don't overlap, what happens? In fact, I have not met one single client where I worked with in group coaching or in training sessions. It's not happened one single time where the values were so far apart that they couldn't find an overlap. It's never happened yet to me. Um, but it's important to know that you're probably at the wrong place if that happens chances of that happening are very low because you are attracted to a company for certain reasons. And it might be the mission, the way they communicate in public. There's usually something that's a mutual attraction there. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, thanks everybody for attending. 
and thanks mete for this lovely session i think a very uh, you know energizing discussion that we uh, have mm, and uh, i think you would be sending a, a short summary to us so that we can share it with everybody very happy to do so yes yeah i think and, and also if you can uh, send the link uh, of your uh, value test you know that you shared yeah i think you know we would like to see uh, yeah people are actually writing you know they want uh, the the content yes you are going to get that you know already meta said and you are going to get the link and you can always connect uh, with uh, meta and it seems you know people are looking for more maybe one more session uh, with you we will be seeing okay yeah and um, you know we uh, we do stand responsible here to bring uh, you know different voices from across the world in the area of coaching and leadership and meta thanks for helping this cause uh, with coach campus um thank you everyone uh, to attend this have a great weekend ahead and thanks meta uh, thank thanks you for so much for having me it was a pleasure it was absolute pleasure uh, to you know be in this session thank you thanks a lot bye bye everyone thank bye -bye. you bye bye